and welcome back to AGT STEM. Today we're going to be watching a video about chlorine. So, without further ado, let's hop to it. So the last time we, we tried to, to film chlorine experiments, we found that the chlorine cylinder itself had a slight problem. It was seized here. But the stig has acquired another cylinder of chlorine. So you know what this means. It means that we feel duty bound to increase the intensity of our chlorine video and show you some chemistry with chlorine. This is going to be fun. Chlorine is an element that many people have heard of. It's a greenish yellow gas and which consists of the gas consists of two chlorine atoms bonded together. So it's Cl2 and it's much heavier than air. Incredibly reactive, incredibly poisonous, not a very nice compound at all. Okay, so Neil is about to, to open the cylinder of chlorine to allow some chlorine gas to leak through the pipe into the, to the flask in the fume hood. Chlorine sits in the right hand side of the periodic table, the halogens in group, well, some people say seven, some people say 17. Really what that says, is that chlorine wants another electron to get that noble gas configuration and it will move heaven and earth to get that electron. So during the First World War, it was used as a chemical weapon. The gas could spread across the um, battlefields and when it came to the trenches, which were holes in the ground, it would fall into the trenches and fill them up. That's cool. So I guess like they were on a they were on a hill and then the gas that they poured it and it went down and just filled up in the trenches and then people would go in there and probably inhale it and die you can see the yellow color against the white background on the paper so now we're starting to fill that flask with chlorine it's quite dense so it will stick to the bottom of the flask it's not like a light gas like hydrogen or helium it won't come upwards so now you can see the color in that chlorine is it's really quite intense. It wasn't a terribly good weapon because it could quite easily, if the wind changed direction, it could blow the gas back to the people who were letting it out. So we'll just put a stopper in to contain the gas while we prepare the rest of the experiment. Chlorine is quite corrosive. It reacts with water to make an acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid, which... I thought people used chlorine in pool. Or I thought people used chlorine in pools, but maybe the, maybe it's somehow like a different kind of chlorine because they're saying it reacts with water and makes acid. So I guess we, we shouldn't be swimming in acid. It can attack people's lungs. The lungs generate fluid. They fill up with fluid and quickly the person drowns in their own fluid. Um, it also corrodes things very easily, so all the metal fittings on people's um, battle dress, the ba brass buttons, brass buckles, all went green as well. But it's not a terribly f effective weapon, but when people weren't expecting... These masks that people wore, they look so weird. They, they're like creepy, I don't... I, I, and probably wasn't even that effective any sort of chemical weapon, <coughs> it must have been terrifying. Okay, so we have a small amount of, of aluminium here, which we put on the end of a wire. We're going to heat the aluminium in that flame, and then we're going to put the hot aluminium into the flask of chlorine. Then hopefully we'll see the chlorine will react with the aluminium, and we'll get very rapid formation of aluminium trichloride, ALCL3. The British Army created whole regiments of um, gas <coughs> soldiers who were all trained chemists who were sent out to handle these cylinders of gas. And on the German side in the First World War, Fritz Haber, the inventor of the Haber process to make ammonia, became very keen on chemical weapons and he was the chief proponent. His wife was really furious about this and in fact shot herself 
with his revolver, killed herself the day before he was due to go back to the front. And he, it was said that this was because she objected to his um, work on chemical weapons. Though at the same time, there were rumours that he was having an affair with another woman, so there may have been other factors at play as well. So, let's heat up our aluminium. Okay, so it's nice and warm all over. And then we'll drop it, we'll add it into the chlorine glass. Now instantly we're seeing aluminium trichloride coming out of the top and reacting with moisture in the air. So now you can see the, the reaction is getting very intense and we're seeing a flame in the bottom. So the aluminium is being consumed as it's reacting, oxidizing strongly in that chlorine rich air. That's insane. It's like, it's, it wasn't the, it's not even, and it's not even like the al aluminum was hot. They just put it in, it was warm and they put it in there and it made a big flame. Chlorine is found all over the world. The sea contains sodium chloride, and there are huge deposits of sodium chloride um, in salt lakes where lakes have dried out, such as um, in some parts of the States, where you have United States, where you have salt lakes, where um, people can race cars and things across the flat surface, and in other parts of the world. All of the aluminium has been consumed now by the chlorine. Very, very rapid reaction. That's crazy. He had like a huge thing of al aluminum stuck to the bottom of this, and now he only has this little tiny dot. There are many areas, um, such as in the north of England, in the county of Cheshire, and also in Salzburg and Austria, where there are prehistoric deposits of salt from um, prehistoric salt lakes which can now be mined really quite easily. And there's so salt and chlorine is a very common element. It's made from sodium chloride solution by electrolysis, by passing electric current. And it's a very energy intensive process. 1% of the UK's electricity was used at one time for making chlorine from sodium chloride. And the chlorine is used particularly for making the um, plastic PVC. While we got chlorine here, we thought we'd do a couple of reactions. So like the chlorine is in like the PVC pipes that you'd probably find like under your sink or whatever. So we've got some chlorine in this flask and you can see the nice yellow color. And I thought what we try and do now is do a competition reaction again, or, or a reaction with iron. So now the iron, we're going to heat the iron. This is iron wool, which you might use for treating wood. And we're going to heat that till it's warm and put it in the chlorine. The chlorine will oxidize it to iron chloride. Chlorine will react with all sorts of metals. You can make salt by burning the metal sodium in um, chlorine. And if you put in other metals like aluminium or iron, they will also react. Aluminium reacts to form aluminium trichloride, which is the salt of aluminium, and iron will similarly react to form iron chloride. And most metals, but not all of them, will react with chlorine. Lead will not, for example, but it is really quite a reactive gas. So really rapid reaction there as the hot iron starts to react with the chlorine to form iron chloride. Very, very exothermic again. And I think, yes, this is very hot. We might have to move it off the paper. So what happens in all of these reactions is that the chlorine removes an electron from the metal to make the chloride ion, Cl-. And the chloride ion is perfectly um, innocuous. You can drink, you can eat chlorine uh, chloride whereas chlorine itself is very poisonous. So maybe what's actually in the pools is chloride rather than chlorine. It's warm. It's not too hot to touch. It's like 
picking up a, a mug of warm tea or a warm coffee but you can see again the products of the chemical reaction are precipitated out across the flask and now if I remove the flask uh, the wire again I can see that all of the iron has been consumed instantly the moment that it got into that chlorine rich flask very very rapid reaction very very reactive with chlorine well thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time stay smart bye